How do you deal with like if you're here? What about your home inspections and all that day-to-day -day stuff? How are you handling it? I have this crazy thing called a phone. <laughs> and people call me on this when something's wrong, and I answer it, and I say, "Yeah, this is what we need to do." That's it. I'll do a deal for free right now. Okay. You know why? Because every relationship is worth 10 to 20 deals to me over the life of my career. Okay, now, I gotta go. So okay. I want everybody to get on this wall, because I want to take a big picture. One, two. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. I get up at 4.30. I answer DMs for an hour, and then I uh, go to the gym. Then I come home, eat breakfast, take a shower, get to the office by eight. I study my business for 15 minutes. I have a little meeting with my assistant, and then I just crush whatever was on that list for the day. Three o'clock comes around. I make a. I have another little meeting with myself to make sure there's not like a couple of things that are have to get done today. Things that way, if I do that second meeting at three and I can leave at five feeling good that I didn't leave anything on the table and I can shut my mind off from worrying about that I forget something today. Now you have a marital problems. It all comes from you not having that three o'clock meeting with yourself to make sure that there's not two or three phone calls or emails or something that you have to get done before the end of the day. That way you can go, you're never gonna get your whole list done ever. There's, but there's a lot of that that can wait till tomorrow and there's a few things that can't. So you want to knock out the things that can't wait, and then to, and then we can go home and actually have a life, and then come back the next day recharged to do it all over again. Gonna get a amen. Gonna get a hallelujah. <laughs> so we go. You invest in real estate, right? What, yeah. What asset class do you typically invest in? What do you use? Multifamily, single family? Or what, do you, what are you buying right now? I've got I've got long term uh, single family. I've got duplexes. I've got fourplexes. I've got condos on the beach. Uh, I've got houses I buy and flip. Um, that's about it right now. I work in a big market, but somebody like you in a small market, what, what do you think, expansion or relocation, if you had the opportunity to move to a bigger place where there's more opportunity, money-wise? I've thought about that. Like, I thought, oh, I could go to Miami, because I have my portal license. Or I'd go to New York, you know, first Ryan, I could go to, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I could go out there and crush that. But the thing is, I'd have to start completely over. It's like, you gotta think about infrastructure. I have so, such infrastructure in place with my database, my clients, my, you know, my team. I'm a single agent, but my team consists of a title company that I've used for 10 years. A mortgage guy I've used for 10 years. You know what I mean? Like, I have a, a professional photographer. I have a handyman that knocks out all the inspection items. and stuff. Like, I have, everything is just like, Boom, it's just so easy, you know what I mean? And I think uh, I think that, you know, that's a tough question when you're starting out and you don't have the infrastructure in place. That could be an interesting debate. But as far as me. Because I'm seeing it now, I'm in real estate in New York City. I see a lot of wealthy people, they're moving from New York to Florida because of taxes. So these are high net worth people that started their business in New York hey, and, and are doing it. The thing is, when they get that tax for people that own property five million and, and higher, um, the thing is, that's an opportunity. Network with agents in Florida, make it happen. Start sending referrals and people that want to, you know, start cold calling people and say, hey, did you hear about the tax? Start cold calling people that have properties over $5 million and say, hey, you want to move to Florida? I got an agent for you down there, see what I'm saying? Just dabble in stuff, look for opportunities and try stuff. Something special, being a new agent at all the coaches, all the programs, they're like, we're gonna sell you this, you're gonna be successful. Because I want, because I genuinely want you to succeed. That's why. You know, when somebody has, somebody's charging, it kind of, to me, it's like, where, what's your intentions? You know what I mean? I'm not saying that there's that every paid coach is bad, snake in the grass. There's tons of great coaches out there that charge, tons. I'm just saying, you know, in today's world, this generation, they want authenticity. They want, they don't have time for somebody who is not who they say they are. And there's too many people out there that have co that are that have sold for two years, sold 19 properties, and now they're selling courses for $100 a month. You know what I mean? It's true. 
And so many new agents don't understand the process, they just fall for it. That's why I'm here. And I'll crush, like the guy says on Shark Tank or whatever, like I'll crush them like a cockroach. That's what I'm gonna do to all the coaches. Not because I hate them, but because I love you. Why Red X with the Well, you know, I switched to Red X maybe two years ago. I was using Mojo, I tried Expresso, Vulcan, Mojo. Mojo was decent, but still not great. Um, and then I switched to Red X and it was like, the pickup, the accuracy of the numbers was so much better. Now that was two years ago. There's a couple things. Number one, that was two years ago. So <laughs> did Mojo upgrade their data? Probably. Did Vulcan or Vortex or whoever you're talking about upgrade their data? Probably. Um, also, there's different areas. You know, like Red X doesn't work as great in this area, works really good in this area. Where this area that doesn't work really good in, you know, Vulcan works really good in. So you gotta kinda, to me, I think you gotta kinda try them all out and see which one works the best for you. The, the, the deeper problem is they're all gonna have a lot of bad numbers because it's just bulk numbers that you're buying. And so people say, oh, they're all wrong numbers. I'm like, well, how many calls did you make? 40. How many people did you talk to? Seven. I'm like, holy smokes, that's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like complaining and then they cancel and then they yeah. go try to do Facebook ads. It's nuts. Do you, like with the do not call list, do you, like, that comes up a lot on products? Do What's that? The do not call list. I love numbers? calling them. Yeah. You do call them. <laughs> oh, I'm scared of that time. The thing is, and like, yeah. you know, whatever's on camera. I, like, do not call is, uh, <laughs> like, the thing is, no, seriously, the, the thing is, nobody's ever been fined. Oh. Yeah. Somebody, please tell me somebody's been fined. I know people You know I somebody's have, been fined? Really, but like, I have heard those stories. I would love to see it. Yeah. I would love to see it, because I've never found, never found a case. Now. Here's the thing, DNC was created to protect customers from robocallers and scam artists. That's fine, but we're not robocallers and scam artists, is what I'm saying. We're calling people to see what we can do to help them. My best clients came for DNC, and those are the best phone numbers. Because I think Vulcan and Mojo and Red X and all those, I think they flag them as DNC not knowing. Because they want to make sure they're not cross. They're like, oh, I don't know. Just just market DNC, and it's a cell phone. Those are the best quality numbers. And who knows if they're really on the DNC or not? It's just Red X telling you. What's your system are you using? Did, I, did everybody get a book? Yes. Thank you. Ma'am. CRM. CRM system. Is there a serum system that you're using? Same website? <laughs> I don't have one. I don't have a CRM. Well, why? Why? How do you sell hard properties a year, Ricky? Well, yes, yeah, seriously. Why? 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 Why?
you know? And then that weekly email is a safety net on the back of my business mm -hmm. that captures all the crumbs that fall through that I somehow accidentally don't follow up with for whatever reason. Well, they got that email and they call me in three weeks or three months or two years mm -hmm. ready to do something. And they saw through the email the original content that I create every week. So now drip campaign telling you how to cook yeah. shrimp etouffee. Yeah, like you don't care. Do you care how to cook shrimp etouffee? What is it? Do you care? Neither do any of your prospects with these drip campaigns that tell you what color to paint your walls in the fall and, and you know, like the best time of year to, uh, you know, get ready for things. Like nobody cares about that. They want to know original content from you. What do you think about the market? What are the pending deals right now? What's the new listings for the last couple weeks? They want to know what you think. They don't want to see the same exact word for word email through a drip campaign that five other realtors sent them at the exact same time. See what I'm saying? How do you deal with like if you're here, what about your home inspections and all that day-to-day -day stuff? How are you handling it? I have this crazy thing called a phone. And people call me on this when something's wrong and I answer it and I say, yeah, this is what we need to do. That's it. That's it. All right. Do you have people ask you to cut your commission? Mm -hmm. All the time. Uh, how do you answer that? What, what commission would you like to pay? Uh, I would do a deal for free. I'll do a deal for free right now. Okay. You know why? Because every relationship is worth 10 to 20 deals to me over the life of my career. I'm not, I'm not saying to do deals for free. I'm just making a point. Okay? Um, in our market, six is standard, five is pretty common. You know, I'm normally, I normally get six. And every once in a while, I do five. And then every once in a while, you know, there's this one deal. We did like three deals, and he's going to do a $2 million deal later and all this. I did it for one. You have the buyer's agent two and a half. I did a, I did a 1.5 one for. Uh, I think two is what I got. I mean, you know, so you, what's, the thing is, is when negotiating, play poker face for just one second. Stay hard on it for just one second because what they're trying to do is they're just trying to see if you'll budge. And there's two things going on there. If you don't budge, they may say, okay, cool. If you do budge, they might think, he's gonna budge on my price when you negotiate in my house. See what I'm saying? So play poker face for a second. Say, listen, man, I, I appreciate that, but you know, do you want me to you want me to cut the price of your house when we start negotiating that? Same scenario. But normally, just stay firm. See what they do. And oh, here's a trick. Here's a trick. I like to do. I like to say, it's six is standard. Now, if I sell it myself, represent the buyer, do it for five, and then you get it for six. Chances you sell it yourself are pretty slim. Okay, now I gotta go. So I want everybody to get on this wall because I wanna take a big picture. One, two, 